bringing in um, visiting artists. We have Malia, is it Chen? Malia, Malia Chen. Sorry, Malia Chen, sorry. That's all right. Okay, and you're from Maine? Yes, yes from sir, Maine. yes sir. Okay, so I'm gonna let her talk, because I know you get tired of hearing me. She's gonna tell you a little about herself, okay? Thank you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well thank you guys for having me. Um, it's my second time in California, and I, yeah, I love it here. It's fantastic. Um, I've spent uh, quite a few years as a traditional style apprentice to Colin Lewis, and I later did some uh, refining of my studies with Sandra Signetti, which is a contemporary of Colin's in, in Italy. Um, and uh, I feel like that that's given me a, a different perspective than maybe some of the other um, gentlemen or some of the other people that uh, your club has seen before. And um, I'm, so I'm just here to share that with you guys. And I feel really grateful that my Boone's Eye journey has collided with all of yours because it's a process that, um, something that keeps me constantly learning, is, is so engaging, it's brought so many wonderful things into my life, and, and I'm sure that probably resonates with, with some of you. Um, yeah, it's, it's a spiritual journey, it's, um, it's a, you know, visually, um, you know, it's an art, it's fun, it's horticulture, it's, um, you know, science, it's, bonsai is so many things, and uh, it's just, um, yeah, it's, it's just really beautiful, and uh, it's something that uh, will always be part of my life, and that I certainly feel should be encouraged to be, be part of everyone's life, so. I think that this is a nice moment for all of us. And we're gonna work a juniper today. And um, I also wanna thank Bob for hosting me and his wife, Miranda. Like they were, they're really nice to me. Like super nice to me, yeah. And so also like during this, um, if anyone has any questions, ideas, um, I, I really want this to be sort of a collaborative like exchange. Um, I'm not, um, you know, I, like I said, I, I'm sort of giving you guys my perspective, but um, I know that you all have perspectives that, that maybe I haven't seen. So if this can be a communication for everyone, um, I think that makes it, that only enhances the value. Um, because if we think about everyone in this room, um, yeah, there's a lot of experience here. And um, I want to take advantage of that um, for myself as well. So if, if anyone has any ideas or thoughts or questions for me um, as this is happening, like I think that's nice if it's sort of, um, you know, that's what a club's about, right? We're bringing people together. We all have different perspectives. We all have little bits of knowledge that we can, we can all sort of, um, you know, learn from each other and stuff. And, and, and that's, that's important. So is there a species, what do you guys think if there is, is there a species that's probably the more popular to work with in, around here in this area? Or that th really thrives the most, like from a horticultural standpoint? Our club is a uh, deciduous, primarily. Oh, interesting, okay, okay. So it's hard to say. All right. And that's a totally different game, right? Deciduous versus conifer, it's like opposite. So yeah, yesterday we had a club. Uh, I was at a club meeting, and we um, collaboratively sort of designed a tree and made some choices. And it was it was really fun. It got kind of deep at times, and it was it was great. So yeah, I, I that's why I guess I'm. If yeah, if you guys have comments, like I'm totally receptive to to that sort of engagement. Do you know what type of it's a it's a needle juniper, um, blue rug. I don't know the, the Latin name for it, blue rug juniper. Um, often me spreading. Um, I but I don't know the Latin. I'm not. I don't really have horticultural training. There's certainly um, 
Uh, but this tree certainly, this I've worked with this species in, in Maine. It certainly grows well there, but um, yeah, that's not my strength, I guess. What do I like to work on? Shimpaku, because I like styling trees. And with the shimpaku, you can dial it in. You can get that, mm, like, yeah. And that's why I like working with them. Also, they're really cold hardy. And I mean, they're the kind of the queen of bonsai species. Like, they're elegant. They, you know, yeah. Like, you see the guys that, that have this, 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 this styling um, um, experience. And with shimpaku, you can get those nice, clean, um, under the, the, the underside of the foliage, like, like it barely even looks real. It's like, like, whoa, that's a plant. Like, yeah. And that's, um, with Shimpaku that can be achieved. Um, it's a little bit more difficult with other species of juniper. Um, yeah. So I don't really have the horticultural training, but I know that, um, yeah, with that, just the way that the needles grow on the Shimpaku, um, it's much easier to achieve that really clean um, sculptural um, foliage pad with with that with then yeah. yeah. I think Experience. When you see a tree that is this, I would say, long and tall, mm -hmm. is there any styles that you would gravitate towards, either a cascade or a fusion? Well, I think, um, and where I've put myself is like, and this is why I'm here, so I can share my own perspective. Trying different styles is important. And uh, that's why I like working with different people and different kinds of people is important. Um, that's the times where I've grown as a person. Um, so like yesterday we made a really compact image with a similar piece of material. So this evening we'll do a more elongated, I guess I'd call it more yin aesthetic. Um, and almost the opposite of what was done last evening. And I feel like for myself and I guess for everyone, like trying opposite things and trying different styles is really important. I think that's when we sort of learn where we're comfortable, where our strengths are, where our weaknesses are. and. Yeah, so that's um you want to take it out of that pot? Oh, that's a good idea. Yes. I'm also it's you know a bit of a learning curve here for me as far as working on a tree and also verbalizing my thoughts. So I'm doing I appreciate your patience. Thank you. Yeah, just the way the foliage is on the on the needle juniper, the way it opens, there it's much more difficult to have that um, very clean sculptural look that we're used to seeing in like the Japanese, the formally, the formal Japanese um, trees, like if they're presented at an exhibition or an event. Um, So um, I didn't, um, we've been working trees uh, or material like this in Bob's workshop as well as yesterday, but I hadn't really taken time to create a plan for this particular piece of material. Um, but yeah, we're going to do the opposite. Yesterday we did compact and so today will be elongated in I guess what I want to call a more yin aesthetic. So what are you doing right now? Um, now I'm just sort of cleaning up things that I know for sure I'm not going to use. And the more one does something, uh, there's a bit of um, uh, less thinking involved. Um, so it's sort of just like, okay, I'm... Uh, and then one can see the trunk line and um, the structural branches, the first branches, and, and choices can be made once we uh, have a little more of a visual. I mean, have any of you guys created um, trees from nursery stock? Is that something you guys do as a club, right?
Oh, that's a good question. Hmm. Hmm, let me think on that a moment. That's a good one. Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. Um, and the and, and larch is great because the larch are super hardy as well as has so many similarities uh, between the Japanese and American uh, version, um, not version or, or varieties. And uh, they're both they're both nice. Have that um, seasonal color change a little bit. Um, <laughs> also, larch are nice because they, they have really um, sort of preferences for the wet, um, and uh, so they can't be over watered. They're they're really um, well, that's a good one. yeah, <laughs> you know they're they're not uh, fickle species. That's for sure. Like some of the, yeah, they're really strong. Not um, not not too picky as far as like substrates you know with some species you have to be so specific as to like a substrate ratios and stuff like that to get it to to live in a pot or, and then the, or the next level thrive in a pot and then there are some species that um you know just really take to it um and you know one doesn't have to be as um you know uh, scientific or this or that um, because the species itself just is um it just uh, more suitable for potted plants um, and, and not that the same image can't be achieved with with many varieties but some are just certainly more um, naturally inclined towards being potted and uh, thriving in that environment without trying without so much um hullabaloo kind of thing you ever worked with blueberry um i I haven't. They're a guy. I, I mean, that's certainly something. I mean, they're na they're around, um, and I know people who have blueberries, and they're great. Um, not something that I have in my own collection. When you were in Italy, what kind of stuff did you work on? Uh, Sabina junipers, um, Shimpaku. What? Mostly Yamadori there? Yeah, yeah. Yamadori scene over there is hot. Like those guys, I mean, they're the mountain, the mountain regions. They have guys that are super, super aggressive about digging all sorts. Um, yeah, they have great Yamadori. Really great Yamadori. And, and that can be the basis for, for lots. Excuse me. In case people don't know, you go through that door, the women in the I mean, yeah, in my personal opinion, um, the, the Italians, they, they got it. I mean, they got the passion. They got, like, the art in, like, their blood or something. And then they got the guys that are willing to go into the mountains and grab it, too. So, I mean, they, they have every, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they have a really thriving bonsai community. And I think for all those reasons. So does anyone have any thoughts about sort of, um, I guess, style or? Windy. Yeah, right? Okay. I certainly have a preference for that. And so just so we can begin to start thinking about scale and thinking about which branch may be an appropriate apex um, so that, you know, we're always thinking scale. It's a tree in miniature. 
Where do you see the quarterback tree at? In this sort of region here. And then I should, I'll mark it. Um, I always try to be a little bit fluid with my decisions as far as like, okay, this is the front. I know that it can always go a little bit this way or a little bit that way. Because whenever I make an exact plan, something always happens. Nature, life, um, you know. Uh, so I try to give myself always a little bit of room to maneuver in either way. I mean, I'm sure that, I mean, do you guys agree? Like you have a tree and you make a plan for it and then sometimes things happen, right? Yeah, a branch breaks or a gust of wind comes by and blows a tree off a bench and, and then a design has to be redone or, you know, earthquakes, yeah, I mean, right? Yeah, yeah, or, or, or I mean, a mole can chew on a root, can chew on a root, and totally then you got to change the front. I mean, like, yeah, there's so many variables that we can't control because some of Bowen's Eye is about, okay, we can feed it this, we can feed it this, we can control the growth, we can do this, we can do that, but then there are, there are always going to be variables that we can't control. Oh, um, to not always follow the rules. <laughs> yeah, to not always follow the rules. Um, Colin makes his own ideas. You know, this is my scroll. It's not actually a scroll, but it's my scroll. Um, and that opens up uh, creative um, opportunities for people. Um, it also, I feel, makes Bones Eye super accessible. Um, you know, because some of these uh, components can be, um, you know, to some people um, not not accessible. And, and I just feel that in all the right ways, it opens up the doors for people, for people to take liberties, for people to be a little, um, yeah. And, and I like that about it. It made it exciting for me because I, I love all the, the traditional um things the visual bits about display and about all the Japanese arts but um, that always made it exciting for me the sort of choices that that he'd make uh, he has a little tokenoma in his workshop and so sometimes we do little like displays we put different things together and we'd use um, a vertical or um, something as an accent that maybe wasn't a plant and, and he'd get playful with it and sort of just, um, yeah, create options where one didn't think there were options. Like make your own friggin' options. And um, yeah, and I guess, you know, and many of the things he taught me, I, I then put to my own life. Yeah. It's you buy a um, yes. He has a small nursery, and it's um, you know capacity to if one wanted to like stay for an intensive like week or weekend. You know he works with private clients. He has his own school with um, a proper schedule um, and uh, yeah, but to visit as well. Yeah. Oh really? Oh well, he's he would love that. I'm sure. It's, um, well, I, I would suggest that you email him and just to be respectful of his, you know, because sometimes, as we know, these things can be, you know, so I'm not saying exactly where he lives, what, but Southern, yeah, Southern Maine, like Kenny Bunk area. Okay, let's say that. Okay.
today. So I'm just, you know, cleaning up some branches and So um, Robert said that like, so chochabai works here, right? You guys can have that. You guys can grow chochabai and shimpaku. So some of the species that I can work, you guys can also, is that right? Okay. Um, I don't have a preference. Just like, I wish I could have a never ending supply of shimpaku is what I wish. Um, <laughs> Which ones do you guys work on? Do you have, let's say, do you play Gower or Kishu or? Uh, he, has a bit, he has a bit of everything. And then there's a gentleman in Massachusetts that's sort of like grafting expert um, who really dials it in. And then I guess this is where it's like, this is where everybody's, some people's skills are highlighted and everyone has different skills. Um, and, uh, and, and yeah, so I, I, I feel like it would behoove me to certainly say um, there's uh, Peter Keene in Massachusetts that's got some really strong grafting skills. And uh, yeah, his, you know, that's where the nuance comes in. And I'm, I feel that my strengths are in sort of some, some visuals and some creative realms and um, you know when it comes to horticulture and things like that. Not that I can't graft, but there's always people that have you know um, specialties in certain things. And um, I, I wanna be the kind of person uh, that uh, will say, you know, when someone's certainly better than me in one category. Peter Keen's kind of like the Masi sheet. Okay, yeah, he's, he's, you know, I mean, grafting is a really strong skill. You know, I mean, not that I can't graft, but his are, his are really good, like freaking seamless, you know? So we got to give credit where credit's due. She talks well. She's <laughs> So now we can see the trunk line of the mark. Hold on. Okay, so, you know, a little bit, a few cuts. We're sort of cleaning up. Now we can see a trunk line. And I feel that, um, yeah, we're going to do a more elongated image. And you guys can see what I'm seeing in this wires, the front. How do we feel about it? Does anyone have a, a different idea? Or? Well, uh, I like this branch for it simply because the natural inclination, it's already bending forward as an apex should. Um, I don't mean 100% that is it, but that's what came really naturally um, to me. Do we think this is too tall? Like, right? Okay. Like, yeah, the, the taper on it feels appropriate. Um, the way it's naturally coming towards one. Um, it just really organically felt like, oh, that's the apex, you know, without thinking. And um, sometimes that's, when you don't have to make the decision, the decision just sort of appears, um, like it feels right to me. Where's your first And so sort of continuing with the trend of you know, things that I know I'm not going to use, like 
cleaning the underside of branches so I can see the lines so that we can sort of make more, you know, a further, you know, branch selection choices. So this fly on gin, this one, and like gins and sharis are artistic tools as we're creating a tree in miniature. You know, we want the feeling. Or not always. Someone brought this up yesterday, and I thought this was so keen that um, you know that uh, work in different kinds, all sorts of different kinds of material. The tree doesn't always have to be the feeling of antiquity, although that certainly is um, is probably a. a a popular choice or, or a trend, I guess. Um, someone brought that up yesterday, and I just thought that was that was really keen. That you know, there's beauty in in all um, different, obviously species as well as like ages of trees. Um, so yeah, gin and shari is certainly an artistic tool for conifers uh, to impart that feeling of antiquity. But um, yeah, there are some. I've seen some lovely. Um, sumacs that are quite um and one was a clump and and i mean these were really young pieces of material but um they made me feel something in the past few years i've doing less things by the rules or following what the guys are doing and just doing what make what feels right to me um and if it makes me feel something uh, if i'm just attracted to it and i think it's beautiful and so now i'm becoming my own thing instead of like okay the guys are doing this so i'll just copy them so and um I, yeah, I've seen some sumacs online that were just striking, lovely. Um, the sugar content of sumac allow, gives them a really, um, the autumnal colors in, are just so bold and, 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 and lovely. Um, yeah, I really like sumac. And, and what I've seen of it. It's not something I've worked with, but when I've seen it, it's, it's quite feminine, delicate, and totally opposite aesthetic um, than sort of this really um, um, struggling sort of alpine tree image. Just a different, a different kind of image is all. You know, and, and there isn't a right or a wrong, but I really have enjoyed um, some of those particular trees when I've seen them online. And I've always thought that, um, and I mean, let me know what you guys think as a club, but myself, um, like sometimes being tactile, like Devin, what do you guys think about, like, because I certainly have thoughts, photos I've saved online and things like that. If somebody did a PowerPoint presentation, like, do you guys find that stuff boring or what? No. Okay. Sometimes it would be really good. Okay, um, okay. Robert's uh, brought in the before and after, years of data about the <laughs> okay. development. Yeah. Really cool, because then you can see that turns to that. No. Okay. You see the steps. So sometimes PowerPoint can be the raw data. Yeah. And as well as the back before and after. Okay. And when it's that many years apart of a development of a tree, that was amazing. Okay, yeah. Well, um, I've, I've had the opportunity to visit some gardens that maybe, you know, other people haven't been able to visit abroad and, and some of my own ideas. And I don't have one, but I'm just curious what, what clubs think as far as like if, you know, if you guys think that stuff's super boring, that's not something I'd even waste my time presenting to you guys. But if, I, I think that that might be something I'd pull together for 
Um, so you guys get the visual of sort of some perspectives I'm having, some of the trees that I've seen, and, and to share that with you guys. I'd say that the PowerPoint is only as good as the skits of the intro. Because you can just put okay. the up there and literally read it to us, and, and it's going to be boring because there's nothing there. But if it's like, here's an outline, All right, so if I get the... you give it that, that you know, it's an outline and you tell the story, okay. it becomes entertaining because you're, it's not just being read to you. Okay, okay. Yes, 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 resource. Okay, we're on to something. Okay, yeah, all right, yeah. No, that's definitely something I do because I, yeah, I've been taking for years now, I've been taking uh, photographs of not the progression of my own trees as well as trees and gardens of other people. And a lot of my perspectives come from those visual cues. And so to be able to give you guys those visual cues and markers so that you guys can work with the same tools that I'm working with, right? That's the a true collaboration. So that's something that I'm going to um, pull together um, when I can find, um, <laughs> when I have the time. And I'm not the most tech savvy, but maybe I can make that. I mean, all right, yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. Okay, yeah, yeah. See, all right, all right. Yep, got it, got it. Well, I just. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 And and I mean, like, I'm, I'm not talking about you know just showing you guys pictures on my camera rolls and pressing a button, like. I want to show you guys the pictures that's okay like this these particular trees changed my perspective on bones eye and this is why so that you guys can literally see them okay yeah all right yeah yeah what happened to the trees during the time yep okay so like you mentioned the sumac and the yeah delicateness of it and it looks like because of the style it's trying to maybe heading down that road okay yeah yeah yeah, and I so I guess I'm c calling that like a yin aesthetic, and I don't know if you guys, does that makes sense. Okay. I'm just I'm really interested because as far as when I first started, and and I mean always, I mean I'm interested to what you guys feel is appropriate for content because I know that, I mean it would depend on how it was presented. Like sometimes these things, you know, yeah. Because I totally see, I, I see many perspectives. Okay, so. Okay. All right, and then um, yesterday also, because there's a bit of a learning curve, but. Um, the reason I keep branches long is because when when we're wiring, and this is a little bit, um, I guess, a, a for styling sort of reasons. Uh, sometimes, although the branch is long for the scale of the trunk, if one is trying to create a tree image in an evening or in just a few hours. Um, you know, we'll manipulate the branch in a way that even if it's actually this long, it may not visually, you know, we'll pull it in so that it, it doesn't actually seem to be as long as it actually is. It's, uh, it's a manipulation, if you will. It's, um, um, it's It just gives us that buffer, sort of like when I said the front can be here a little bit this way, a little bit this way. If the branch is really long, I have the option when I wire and shape it to pull it in really tight, to cut it short, to pull it in a little bit and cut it shorter. It just gives more options, more playroom.
Lindsay, how many years has this club been in existence? Next year is our 60th. Next year is the 60th? 60th for the show. For the show, how about for the club? How long has the club been? All right, I also have a question for tools. Do people have a preference on carbon, stainless, any, like, while I'm sort of working the tree, does anyone have any thoughts on that? Like, do you guys have preferences for those sort of things? As long as they're Japanese, they're good. As long as it's a quality yeah, tool. Yeah. Okay, okay. So actually, I can't say that anymore, because there are some pretty decent tools coming out of China now. Uh, yeah, Joshua Roth has a good one. Well, I mean, tools. these are all, like, sort of, you know, industry-related yeah. topics, right? Um, it doesn't have to be, yeah. Well, I mean, the stainless is just, well, yeah. Well, this is right. Like, yeah. It's really difficult to get a decent mm -hmm. professional. But they don't have to be sharp enough. Don't have to be. So it's, uh, it's trade. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, yes, I, I agree. But the stainless looks cooler. It does. <laughs> And I can leave them outside. Not I'll tell you, yeah, and it's hard. Oh, okay, yeah, that's cool. Okay. So, you know, being fluid, being flexible. Um, oh, but wait. Okay, so I guess we, we, I'm sort of feeling like there's an option here. So, I mean, this branch or this branch could work at the apex, work as the apex. Do you guys have thoughts on that? So that we're sort of opening this up for discussion. This is also helpful to me so I can, I can verbalize things. Because both of them are in places where it, it either could work um, both are bending forward a little bit. Both are really strong and healthy. Um, what do you guys think? Did you say I guess that would be an informal upright. Okay. I mean, styles matter, but I guess where I'm at, like, does it feel right and does it look nice? Is it pretty? Like, does it, does it? Does it look nice? Does it look nice and does it feel right? And those are the most important things to me um, at this point, where I'm at in my own journey. I'm sorry, you're gonna put more Well, I mean, not that one couldn't, because one totally could with wire, with notches, um, just to practice technique and skill, definitely. Um, but um, I feel it's very sweeping and elegant in a subtle way. And subtlety is um, its own kind of beauty. So more certainly, than, than yeah, yeah. I mean, we could have made it more extreme in in uh, with a variety of different techniques. Um, it's it's a very subtle grace, right? This is Los Angeles. We don't do anything subtle. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You get lost in the traffic. <laughs> uh, well, this is where I guess perhaps you know some New England um, charm is entering because New England is much more subtle than LA. You know, we don't have billboards. We don't. We, that's not something that I mean. No, I mean you know maybe Massachusetts does, but you know I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna put myself. There. <laughs> No, but I mean, New England, New England, it's a different aesthetic. <laughs> so what are the two choices that you're thinking about? Okay. 
here or here? And if you use the one in your right hand, where would it, where would it be? Here, here, here. And I, I, I mean, I guess I still feel strongly that because this was my organic, like immediate decision, this one, but I want to open this up. So like, you know, everybody's sort of having their own thought process because it's one thing to hear my thought process and another thing to say to you guys, hey, you guys think about it. What do you think? Okay. Yeah. Does anyone else agree or disagree? Okay. Yeah, right? Go with, yeah, yeah. What did I say? The first, the first idea you have is usually the right one. Right? Well, we did a group thing last night. We ended up with one branch. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on the group, too, you know? <laughs> Oh, like it's it's like the calligraphy or, or it's like single line drawing, um, which like you know many um, yeah like it, it's an it's a it's a challenge, you know it's not a doodle it's um, and it's so beautiful it's it's really that's the height of refinement single line drawing. So you were, who was going to Maine? Oh, okay. I was going to say, is it like road trip? Is he flying? I'm just curious. Oh, really? That's why he's looking for some bonsai stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, you know, it's... <laughs> These are Bob's tools. I didn't bring my own um, because my luggage was lost once, and so I have a little bit of PTSD from from my luggage being lost. If I lost my personal tool collection, I'd be really upset. So Bob's letting me use his tools, um, and just naturally, I've been gravitating towards these. Um, it's like it, it's almost like it, it makes the others obsolete. Um, you know, really, it's almost like. You know, to have options is great, but this one, like, it kind of does it all. It's, it's, um, you know, great size. Um. Besides, I wouldn't have to wait for her to get her baggage. Yeah, well, yeah, that's, yeah. But no, really, like, that was really a, you know, that was like a jarring. Like, the Artisan's Cup, right? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Imagine being at the Artisans Cup and like, you know, you have I don't have any luggage. Like I'm supposed to meet Walter Paul. I don't have a, I, I don't have a change of clothes. Like what's he going to think of me? But um no, but uh, really that um yeah, so that but thanks again to Bob for letting me um use his Okay. All right, what do you guys think so far, right? Are you seeing what I'm seeing like Here. Yeah. And then once I apply wire, I'll, I'll um, style it, if you will. So I guess we have to wait until we apply the wire. Yeah, yeah. It's a little bit of a waiting game. And I guess that's Bones Eye, right? Mm -hmm. Like a lot of it's about waiting. It's kind of like yarn. You have to wait. <laughs> And like this is my favorite. Line. 
Since you've been here, you've been using aluminum wire. I know you're used to copper. Yes, I am. Has it been kind of a, a learning curve? Is, um, is it well, it's different? just. Yeah, it is a little bit. It's just a little, it is, it is different. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely a little bit different. So I'm, I've, I think maybe I've been going a little bit heavier on the wire because I am used to working with copper. Uh, <laughs> well, not that I haven't used copper and not that it can't be effective. Um, you know, just I, there are some differences, you know, from like an elemental standpoint, if one breaks it down on the periodic table, you know, or something. Well, for conference, copper is by far. Yeah, yeah. You know, but um, we got to work with what we got, too. So, I'll ask your question. 1954, Frank Wickle did his, his first Monte Hill show on Jefferson Avenue in the West LA. Um, soon after that, we had his. Um, So it would be 70 years in 2025. CBS will be, will be 75 years. Oh, it's an anniversary. anniversary. So the two clubs should get together. <clears throat> Mr. President, oh, the two clubs idea. should get together in 2025 and do a convention. Oh, so this is where you were going with all this. At 70, 75. <laughs> <laughs> There's a method to my madness. It's a good one, too. Yeah, that's why I was heading. That'd be cool, though. That'd be cool. Yeah. No, not yet. I mean, not, not seriously. This material is cool because um, it's kind of kind of stuff that's readily available to us, and you can have a lot of fun with it. You know, you, just because it's kind of you know, relatively young and small doesn't mean that you can't like, create a cool tree out of it. And uh, this week we've been playing with a bunch of them. I have a bunch of that came from my nursery before. We have a bunch of them. We styled um, eight or nine of them. Yeah, we've been so doing. We've been. They're all different. Every single one of them is different. Some of them are this big. Some of them are this big. Um, put a few of them in the box already this morning. Mm -hmm. For my nursery, I go on. Yes, sir. This is large. 
What? What? What juniper is this? Did you, did you say a No, no, no. Oh, it's
instruction we're going to try to get together and get like a little uh, beginning workshop uh, for you new members so uh, hopefully it'll kind of help you get you know, involved and uh, learning things okay so we'll look in their uh, newsletter uh, for when that's going to come out yeah yeah we surely sent out a uh, the, the handouts for the beginning kind of beginning class, but I mean, you, you can't just do it by hand, you know, that's a 3D uh, art form, so, uh, so yeah, look on our website. What, like an hour before the meeting? Yeah, I think so. So yeah, maybe, and then we'll just set up here. Oh, there it is. Have you guys bring in some things? Yeah, like a workshop? Yeah. Speaking about workshops, Joe, you mind if I make it a... Oh yeah, go ahead, Bob. Bob <laughs> For anybody that doesn't know, um, I moved the nursery from Northridge to Castaic, and Mike Roberts is doing a, um, a workshop once a month where we provide material this coming month in March, March 11th. We're we'll doing a, a boxwood workshop and provide a five gallon boxwood, a custom made Mike Roberts wooden training box. And uh, yeah, Mike will guide people through the process of getting a boxwood started as bonsai. Um, there's a couple spots left in that, so if you're interested in joining in us for that, see me or give me a call at the nursery or send me an email, and we'll get you signed up for that. And the nursery is not open to the public um, except by appointment. So if you want to come by and visit, I encourage everybody to. It looks really cool. cool Just give us a call and let me know when you want to come, and we'll come to you. Yeah, it's a kid's sag. Kids say it, right near Magic Town. But is that during the weekdays as well? Yeah. Okay, so grab a drink and uh, something to eat and sit down and uh, Leah's going to take us through uh, what she's doing here. Don't forget to sign up for please. anybody Thank you. 
working on now? Uh, we're just putting on it's a, a little bit of wire so we can get some shape and do our, our, our branches. You know, the sort of the bones of the tree are set. We have our trunk line, we have our front. So the next, uh, you know, we added a few gins for interest. And uh, now applying some wire so we can start um, to uh, manipulate the branches in the place that we'd like them. Sure, sure. Um, just one moment. Yeah. Uh, you know, the wiring can does take a thought. Well, this tree is in the wrap, so make sure you get your tickets. <laughs> So, you know, once I apply the wire, then, uh, you know, I'll get to sort of generally the first bend and I try to put my first, I guess, a loop or turn of the wire uh, close into to the trunk so that um, the wire will be effective in, in putting the branch where we want it. How many people here have... Uh, are brand new to bonsai, never made a bonsai before. <laughs> <laughs> Come on up and watch her wire. Oh my gosh, she's putting the pressure on me. Yep. Now you gotta really show them how to, how to do it. And this is why I like working with Bob, you know what I mean? He always gives me that extra. <laughs> Yeah, he does, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's the wire for? <laughs> what's the wire for? Yeah, what do we use? The wire uh, so for? we can, so we can, uh, you know, manipulate the branches uh, in a way that is aesthetically pleasing. Um, so it's not like a portrait of the tree or. Uh, no, I guess it's it's an artistic that. objective, if you will. I mean, our objective is to make something beautiful, something that we can enjoy um it's also um you know having a tree is it's a responsibility it's a relationship um if you will So I always try to, um, like when you see people who are professional and proficient um, at, at, at making these trees, um, they're generally, and I love, especially with shimpaku or any kind of juniper, when the branch lines are just so sweeping, so elegant, um, you know, um, one of the things that's nice about styling a tree at this point is sometimes, with styling, you, you're making an image compact and you're manipulating branches, but that doesn't mean a mature image and, and probably the best way to grow bonsai is to, um, yeah, always the longer term. They're just two different, I mean, it's, um, there's different, they're different skills and they're different um, ways to, uh, different approaches. No way around the time, no matter what. Yeah, yeah. When I, yeah, like the trees of Collins, especially the junipers that have that really, the, the trunk lines and then the branch lines are so sweeping. It's like calligraphy. It just really moves me, um, makes me feel something. Um, that's my my goal as, a, as an artist to sort of achieve um, those sort of trunk lines and branch lines. Like, I just, I love that. Because when a tree is that, um, um, being able to see branch lines is something I love. When I can see branch lines, that, it, it, it makes me feel something. And, and I really, and I love that.
and but on the other side the flip side like be taking a piece of material and making a sort of you know tightening up and making that sort of dome image very quickly is also really 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 fun so yeah there, there's value to both approaches So now that I have, uh, you know, when we wire a branch, we always choose, you know, each end of the wire has to go somewhere. So now that that's happened, um, I can now shorten this branch and I have some, the movement in it that feels appropriate. And um, it's always safe to um, cut little by little. Um, we can always cut more. Once it's cut, we can't put it back, so. And Bob's mentioned that these uh, can be, you know, can be a little bit aggressive with these. Yeah, these trees are pretty. They're uh, hard, yeah. Pretty tough. Yeah, and they, and I guess those are the kind of species I like to work with, where you know we can, um, yeah, feel comfortable. Um, doing some drastic things and, and, and don't have to be so concerned about. Surely you bought this in the sale before. Subtleties. Right? Looks good, you can take care of it well. It's good color. Fertilizing. Yeah, exactly. Good job. And some of this is just kind of process of elimination you know, um, as I as I make changes and manipulations, okay, this works, this doesn't. Um, Are you going to put any curves in it? Into the branch? Yeah, I'm sort of just um, deciding where exactly I, I want that. Or not deciding sort of feeling. I try to do things by feeling um, sometimes. So do you think the branches that are moving in the branches should kind of match the movement in the trunk? And since the trunk is kind of subtle. Well, yeah, sort of under, um, yes, definitely. And, and I mean, there's natural, I mean, I think with the trick with most trees is to, I mean, it has a natural beauty and then to enhance what the tree already has. Instead of trying to take a piece of material and make it something it isn't, 
um, find the beauty that the tree already is and then just enhance that. And that's the place where I'm at with bonsai. I think before I was often taking material and I had another image in my head and I'm gonna have this piece of material be this, which isn't necessarily appropriate. Um, so to have a piece of material and to find the beauty that it already is and then enhance that, then we're really doing the material justice um, and it's just a different perspective. Um, and I feel that that's a more appropriate approach to bonsai, um, more respectful of the material, whether it be nursery stock or um, yamadori, um, instead of trying to make a tree something that, that it isn't. Um, that's when it doesn't feel, um, doesn't feel correct. Doesn't mean you should. Yes. Yes. And, and that's just something I've learned through mistake of, of my own at some point. And so I'm. Another thing is like, you know, this is one evening in a few hours, like where the branch is, we can always, you know, push it a little further um, as this is something that we have long-term. Robot porn was playing. <laughs> <laughs> Take a chassis, baby. Take a chassis. <laughs> okay. okay, so now we've applied one piece of wire, one end goes on each branch. What do you guys think about that? Okay, that's that that's the that, yes. Alright. I hope you guys like that. And so I'm going to continue with that now at this point because when we apply wire, um, yeah, we're going to go from here to here now. And this is where some thought, yes, the thought definitely does come in. And I mean, practice is, is what helps. And, and also getting in the zone. Like uh, Somebody mentioned yesterday, um, what kind of music do I listen to? And, and definitely when wiring, um, sometimes that, that does help one focus. So what was the answer? I missed that one. It depended on the mood. <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> yeah, because it can get to the point like when you're really in the zone, that, like hours can go by and, and you're just so. Like, It's always appropriate to go a little bit too heavy because I want to make sure things hold. Um, also, when we're wiring, I mean, some of wiring can be aesthetic as well. Um, it's always uh, definitely um, suggested to go a little bit heavier because if you don't go heavy enough, then you have to double down and apply another piece of wire. And, and when your tree's wired, we're looking at it in our gardens and, um, you know, we want the, the coils to be neat and nice. I mean, not just in appropriate places for the bends, but um, the wire is going to be there for some time. Um, so, um, you know, so that it's applied in a, in a clean and aesthetically pleasing way um, is also important. Um, well, yes, overwintering is, is, can seem really scary, but I haven't had any problems overwintering. Um, I think, 
you know, Portland is certainly a small city compared to some of the um, urban areas you guys are dealing with, but um, I haven't had any problems overwintering. But there also mostly use really hardy trees, right? Yes, yes, and this and that's what I like, and that's what I like. I guess I like working with trees that I know aren't going to be super fickle, super dainty. Things that are going to, I mean. The things that we do to these trees, I'd rather work with species that I know can handle it, that I know can take it. Um, and uh, that just makes it more enjoyable for me because I don't have to worry about some of the other things. You know, I can worry about design and oh my gosh, when what kind of pot am I gonna put this in? And if I can have it in a show, and sort of my hopes and my dreams for a tree and my goals for a tree, instead of having to be, um, so stressed about, you know, is the tree gonna make it through the winter, you know, kind of thing. Luckily for us, overwintering is not an issue. Yeah, <laughs> that's, a, that's certainly a blessing. Okay, so I always, I try to get the first coil close into the trunk. Our next visiting artist in, uh, what's this, February and May? You're going to be a guy named Adam Hock, who um, just came back from uh, an apprenticeship in Japan. He's from the uh, Portland area. And a uh, young guy in his probably early 30s. Got um, it Huh? <laughs> <laughs> my my uh, yeah. okay. <laughs> All right, my dad's going to be happy. <laughs> Hey, at least this time she did it family friendly. <laughs> There's been a few uh, pitches and words coming out of the top. Well, I mean, they're so needle junipers. Good. Sometimes these. Yeah. You know. <laughs> what's what's uh, May's demonstrator again? Adam Pop, P O T H. Oh. I've been bugging him to send me his bio, and he's been so busy repotting and stuff. He's like, Can you wait a couple more weeks. So as soon as I get it, you'll get it. And then in uh, July, we have a, a guy from Florida. This year, it's all Americans. Um, we have a guy from Florida, Mike Lane, who is really uh, quickly making himself known, working with shogi and tropical stuff. And he's, he does some pretty amazing work. And I think he might actually bring some tropical trees out with him. So if you guys want, as a club, want to do a workshop, want to think about that. <coughs> bring some trees that we may not have access to. And then November, November. Oh, uh, Hugo Zamora from, um, he's from Mexico. He was Kobayashi's uh, apprentice. He was here when Kobayashi was here in Riverside a couple years back. He was here at Kobayashi then. Um, and he's really good. So we got some good people this year. How many people here remember CBS? This year our show is in November instead of the fall, uh, instead of the spring. So um, you have plenty of time to get it ready. And if you have a deciduous tree you want to show and you want to try to get some color, bring it to me in the beginning of October. <laughs> and we'll let, it, we'll let it stay up at my place for a month and get some color in it. By the river or No, away from the river. <laughs> <laughs> October, we don't have to worry about the river. It's dry. <laughs> That's at the Huntington? Mm -hmm. That'll be at the Huntington, yeah. But this is the first year that I had fall color in all my deciduous trees. The, the maples were like a, a, on fire. And the tree I had in Pacific uh, Bonsai Espo that my cat went out was golden yellow for the first time ever. Usually it stays green until the spring and it pushes the old growth off. And I was going to say, wow, this is cool. I can show the color. 
and then it rained a couple times just before the, the, the exhibition. So two days before the exhibition, I was there plucking a billion little leaves off of that cat lip at home. Too, too many leaves got washed off, but um, we had some really good color, so I'm hoping that next year we can get some color and see who's stuck for our show. Um, one thing I tried to do last evening, and the material doesn't always present the opportunity, but when, foli when live foliage and gin or shari or deadwood can be close to each other, um, that sort of contrast is really striking I th and, um, and always just feels... Um, that con yeah the contrast like when we when we're painting or when we're doing anything like that um, that's something that I try to do um, if if possible and it just happened right here and I'm, I'm just um, it's been mentioned to me to sometimes to, to try to verbalize um, my thought process and choices so what's I feel that that's worth mentioning. Oh. Um, uh, like dead wood on a tree, a uh, place of the tree that, um, you know, I mean, it's, it's color contrast, but also immediately our brains are making associations. Like, um, you know, we're, we're complex, like humans are, we're complex, right? Um, sometimes uh, uh, many thoughts are happening um, at, at once. Uh, this always, this always work. This is always, um, uh, is always nice to have that interplay because it's opposite. It's dead, it's alive, it's alive and it's dead. And that is very evocative. Um, it makes one feel and um, yeah. Yeah, it makes me feel sorry for the dead one. <laughs> <laughs> and that's something, yeah, I, I've noticed. Yeah, Colin does that a lot with his with his trees, and and that's just um, it's a nuance that we can we can all utilize that sort of idea. You know, you can't force it. Um, I wanted to do it as an example for the club last evening, but the material just didn't have the right branch in the right place. Well, it did until you cut them all off. <laughs> As you can see, Bob's Bob's <laughs> always pushing me. <laughs> Wait. What's that? Don't you feel bad? <laughs> no. I don't do things that make me feel bad. <laughs> yeah. How cold have you gotten so far this year? Okay, so now we've applied our second piece of wire. And we feel that the branches are echoing what the trunk is saying. The subtle grace, do we like it? Good. Yeah, okay.
Okay. Okay, I changed my mind. It, well, <laughs> you know, but like you have to be flexible in life. Like, <laughs> you know, like, you know, always learning things the hard way, right? And, and having a good time while we do it, if possible. Okay, so now this branch will be wired to this branch. That's fucking. Oh, and then I can. Right, the, the horticulture, the science. I mean, the, the tree has to be alive. Um, but they're both important. I mean, without the art, it's a shrub. Without the, I mean, they're, yeah, they're both. In, that's a, yeah, right? The other great thing about gins, and this is worth mentioning, is, yeah, designs sometimes are fluid, and when we wire, wire always has to be anchored on each side. And when we have a gin, because crossing wires isn't appropriate, um, when we do have a gin, it's always an option to anchor our wire to a gin so that we have the leverage to wire the branch with foliage that we are wiring. And for a long time when I wired, um, I was applying the wire, but I was told where to apply the wire. Um, and so this is another level for me to not only apply the wire, but um, implement my own choices. And I generally go like one and a half turns on the on the other branch and then the secondary piece of wire from there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what do you guys think about the back branch and its placement? Nice, we're getting the depth.
Okay, and then also I mentioned yesterday, like I can wire shoots, especially if I had really fine copper wire, I could wire shoots. Um, but obviously, you know, we, we want to put the health of the tree first. I mean, it's fun, but you know, that's when it gets to be, you know, we want the, we want to keep the shoots. It gets exciting. It depends, there isn't an amount of time. We just have to watch the tree. Different trees are gonna grow at different rates. Depends on how we're feeding, depends on how much it rains that year. So many variables, um, which is what makes it part of the challenge, you know? And challenges are fun. Okay, so what do we think so far? I mean, like that. Yeah, pretty. Okay, now we're gonna do the attack. Yay! Is it fun? And so for the apex, I'm gonna anchor the other side to the gin. Little bit of coddling, um, you know, because we we won't. And um, so full sun, partial sun. Uh, I always do a bit of shade after a repot or anything drastic. Um, you know, I. I Well, um, Bob's been, Bob's had great success in being rather aggressive with these, um, you know, and sort of also with less branches, there can be a root reduction um, safely.
know these streets, so I know the food system is really good, the environment there, and, you know, it's down in the top part of the center of the culture, so you need to look at the food on that. Right, let's get you. Okay, so, all right, now I have the apex where I want it. What do you guys think? Right, okay. So originally, I mean, the branch was over here. We have that interplay of the dead and the live. It's coming forward a little bit. It's doing everything that an apex should. Okay, yeah. Oh my gosh. And hide it. Oh my gosh, that makes it dramatic. <laughs> All right, let's start pulling tickets. We'll do the uh, raffle, the uh, demo tree last. <coughs> First one up, Johan. Come on down. Uh, BW. Can you take a picture of you? And, and oh, yes, of course. <laughs> that would be wonderful. I, c I could. I definitely. Yeah, I definitely. I definitely could. I'm, I mean, if we have, yeah, fine. Yeah, I feel like you know, we don't only push it so far, but um, you know, I mean, from when it came in, I mean, yeah, yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> well, and look at the apex is in a, what do you think, a decent, appropriate spot? Yeah. Yeah, certainly, certainly, yes. yes. Oh, thank you. KT. Yeah, 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 that's a great idea. That's a wonderful idea. Cat. For you. Cat stand. MD. I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there's a guy that's brought it in. Got that woman's gentle touch when we get to the <laughs> Kaya? Kaya. 
Oh, yes, sir. If they pass, then it's free to come and take. 